watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. When it's time to take off, I'll be jumping out the gym. Back with game reviews, come get the scoop from Josh and Glenn. One of our main goals coming into the season is make it to an ACC championship. This group that we have, we've played together since we were little. I'm excited just to play with my team. I only have a few more games left of the season. Just embrace it all. In eighth grade, we won the ACAC, so we have that connection. Anytime you get advanced to Friday and you get you know one game closer, that, that's that, that matters. Television on, watching highlight zone. Wait for team Friday nights. Who bringing the dub home? Local area sports with a hip hop remix. Mike Strong. Here for the basketball season, television on, watching Highlight Zone. Hey, tonight on the Highlight Zone, we are tipping things off with a major milestone. Yeah, this week marking the 100th year for the ACAC Boys Basketball Tournament. It's the longest running conference tournament in Indiana history. And, you know, given this state's uh, basketball pedigree, probably one of the longest running tournaments in the country. It is tournament time with Josh Ann in your Highlight Zone. Game of the week, Josh. All right, Glenn, history is the name of the game tonight at Elmer Stroutman Gymnasium. ACAC Tournament Semifinals. Warriors coming off a 19-point win at Bluffton to tip off the 100th year for the tournament back on Tuesday. The Raiders, meanwhile, for the first round by Southern Wells at Woodland. It is your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Woodland coming in with an overall record of 12 and 2. Southern Wells, meanwhile, looking to build things under first year head coach Joel Roush. But Woodland in control pretty much from the get go. How about super sophomore Trey Yoder showing off the range from the top of the key? Next trip down, Yoder. This time going coast to coast, skimming the basket. And the foul he would go on to leave Woodland. The 17 of the Warriors up 25 7 after one. And Woodland really running away with this game, literally and figuratively, as Alex Miller scores in transition. Southern Wells, though, trying to punch right back as Evan Pennington muscles his way down low for two of his nine. But then Woodland closing out the half pretty strong as uh, Ethan Klepper, excuse me, hits from the corner just before the buzzer and Woodland up 51 to 12 heading into halftime. Woodland keeping things rolling in quarter number three as DJ Gehrig gets the bump and the bucket and Woodland is moving on to Saturday's championship game with a 67-25 win. Uh, I think we're getting a lot of stops. Our defense is pretty good. We're finding other people open. We're just hitting shots. You can't lose when you hit shots. Um, it felt good. It's always nice to get everybody involved and not leave it to one person. Uh, we all worked pretty well together as a team tonight, and I'm glad we came away with it. We, we had great shots in the paint around the rim, and um, that kind of makes it easier for shots from the outside to go. So um, I, I feel like it was just a perfect storm. So who will Woodland get in the tournament championship game tomorrow night? Well, it's going to be the winner of this one. Heritage and Adams Central. This one a pretty good back and forth battle. Third quarter, how about Devontae Washington banking this off the glass to put Heritage in front 29-28. And this one coming down to the wire in the fourth. Micah McClure flying in for Adams Central to put the Jets up 34-29. Now Heritage does tie things up at 36. But it's Landon Leibarger from the corner to put AC in front for good. And the Jets are moving on to the championship round with a 43-36 game. So it's going to be Woodland and Adam Central in Bluffton, 6 o'clock tomorrow night for the ACAC title. Glenn, take it away. Okay, let's head to the girls' ACAC tournament. 49th year for this event. Jay County, the defending champ, the Patriots at home, hosting South Adams in the semifinals. That was first quarter action from Molly Mullen Camp with the bucket. The Patriots in the lead, up by 15 at 17 to 2. Second quarter action, Gabby Bilbrey with the layup, and it's now a 23-point lead for the Patriots and the Pats. They are plenty tough. South Adams is. Delaney Dunnick will get the bucket here, but it's Jay County rolling this one. 72-31 over South Adams. Pats heading to the championship. So, who will Jay County get tomorrow? We got 15-3 Woodland. We got 6-9 Southern Wells. Brianna Roney stepping up from the outside. She drills for three, and Woodland on the board first. A little later, you're going to see Ava Smith, who's been doing it since she stepped on the court for Gary Cobb and company. Off the glass right there, and Woodland jumps out to a 9 nothing lead. You're going to see more from Ava Smith. She finishes the breakaway here. She had a team-high 20 
as Woodland wins 50 to 19. So we got Woodland versus Jay County tomorrow for the ACAC tournament title 7:30 at Bluffton. Let's jump to the NECC Conference Tournament. We are talking semifinals night there as well. That means 10 and 1 West Noble facing 10 and 1 Prairie Heights. The Heights looking good early. They go inside to Isaiah Malone. Good choice. And the Panthers up by two. Later, it's Malone again. Such a tough matchup. He gets the bucket inside. Panthers by three. Austin Kreit. Hey, he is West Noble's all-time leading scorer for a reason. He gets the bucket here. He had 18 points, including a huge one with 45 seconds left as West Noble edges Prairie Heights 39-33. Other half of the bracket, we got defending conference tournament champ Central Noble and Lakeland squaring off in Butler, and this one was a good one. First quarter action, Drew Leet getting to the rack through a layup and Central Noble with an early lead. Coming the other way, though. Watch Ben Kyle fundamentally sound in the post. A little ball fake, then he's moving around on the pivot foot, then it's off glass. You gotta love that if you're a basketball fan of the state of Indiana. This one nodded in the early going. You'll see Fleet with a bucket here. Isaac Gar had 15 points, and that would lead Central Noble. They needed all of them. The Central Noble wins this one by one, 45-44. So it's West Noble versus Central Noble for the title tomorrow, 7.30 at Garrett's. Highly anticipated matchup in the NECC girls semifinals. 18-0 Central Noble, 13-5 East Side. Third quarter action, it was Megan Keeble beating up. You saw Keeble drill the three right there and Central Noble with the double digit lead. More from the Cougars, more from Miss Keeble straight away for the triple, and it's a 43-17 lead for the Cougs. More from Central Noble, and more from Miss Keeble. This time in the lane, the bump, the dump, and yeah, Central Noble is moving on to the championship game. They stay undefeated, 59-37 the final. It means everything to me. I mean, it's, my, it's our senior year. I mean, we're giving it everything we got, and living every day like it's our last, you know? Um, I just came out to be ready to shoot the ball and my teammates helped me. They got me wide, op wide open with the screens and passes. One game at a time, They, like I said, we knew that they were gonna be aggressive and we just had to keep our composure. Other half of that NECC bracket, West Noble at Fairfield. The Falcons 16 and two, ranked seventh this week in the 3A state poll. And they really showed you why in this one. Third quarter, Falcons in the lead. Bailey Willard splashing from distance. And Fairfield up by double digits a little bit later. Yeah, Fairfield trying to show you they're the big dog in this conference. How about Bailey Willard again? She nails it, and it's a 41-10 Fairfield lead. Morgan Gothrock for two right there. And Fairfield wins this one going away. The final 62-16, so we've got Fairfield versus Central Noble at Garrett tomorrow for the title tip at six o'clock in that one. So championship games for the ACAC and the NECC tournament are now set. But when it comes to an SAC boys title, hey, uh, that one's as wide open as it gets. Coming up after the break, we're gonna hit up a full slate of SAC girls and boys double headers. We're talking 10 games in all from the SAC. Meanwhile, some classic matchups in the Northeast state and that includes Norwell, hosting their neighbor to the east in Belmont and a rivalry renewed at Armstrong Arena as well. We're talking a heaping, helping, a hoopage coming your way next in the zone. We'll be right back after this. It's the Highlight Zone. We're at the New Haven Bulldogs. Welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Only on Wayne TV. Hey, with the ACAC tournament in its 100th year, this show has been all about history to this point, right? So sticking with that theme, Leo and New Haven, those two schools have uh, competed for the old leather ball since 1938. Major rivalry renewed at Armstrong Arena, New Haven hosting Leo, and this one back and forth all night long. This is Trey Haichu, the stud for Leo, getting to the rack. Two of his team high 17, Leo up by four in the second quarter, but Mylon Graham can do more than just catch the football. Look at that athleticism in the lane to get a pair. But here's a name you're gonna need to know. 
Nolan Haichu. Kid is only a freshman, drills the three and got fouled. He had 14, but another freshman coming the other way, Corbin Hamill. Hamill drops the hammer. He had 16, and New Haven needed them all. They win it by one, 56 to 55 in the old leather ball game. Staying in the Northeast State, how about a big matchup down at the castle? 11 and 2 Norwell hosting a very solid Belmont squad. And Belmont, oh yeah, there's no give up in this team. That is Andrew James with a short little J right there. And Belmont with an early lead. Later though, it's Leighton Bailey to Luke McBride. Dude had like 34 and 18 in the game earlier this week. He's a player, folks. Later in the first, Brody Bolin going to play college football for Bowling Green. I, Ziggy, Zay. He gets the bucket off the glass, and Norwell starting to take control. You're going to see Cord filling with a triple here for Belmont, but it's Norwell winning at the castle in this one, 69-54. In the SAC, Homestead tied with Northside for the conference lead. But the Spartans trying to shake off a tough loss to Blackhawk Christian earlier in the week. This helps Will Jamieson with the jumper and Homestead up by four in the third. Later, Snyder's Jordan Lee, Lee for three. And Chris Johnson, I don't know if you can tell, not happy about it. Yeah, he would like this though. Tucker Day, man, great to see this kid healthy. He gets the stick back off the miss free throw and one. Then it's Kyron Kalpwicki, one of the most valuable players in the SAC so far this season. He drills at his Homestead wins at Kilmer Court 50 to 40. Northside looking to stay undefeated in SAC play. The Legends hosting Northrop. Northrop led 35-23 at the half. Third quarter, Tay Tay Johnson. We're going to tell you about his night in just a second. He drills it. And uh, Tom Allen there to watch Mr. Johnson. Then Brayshawn Bassett, who had, oh, nine threes last Friday night. That wasn't a three, but it's still a bucket. However, Northrop hanging around. Dallas Lawrence scores right here, but in the end, just too much Tay Tay. He had a Northside record 47 points, breaks uh, Ashanti Jones's previous record. He also hit some uh, game winning free throws right at the end as Northside wins a crucial game 74 73. Tay Tay 47. Woo! At Southside, the Archers coming off a, a win against Marion in their last game. David Speckhardt. For the men in maroon popping in the three. Southside though feeling pretty good on their home court. JJ Foster likes this. JD Morris says more is less. He drains the three. He had 14 points later. Keep your eyes on this one. Omarion Washington with the huge punch. He had woo, 23 points, but Southside falls in a good one to Concordia 61 55 the final. Bishop Wenger riding high after a win at New Haven on Wednesday night. The Saints on the road against Wayne. Chase Barnes dishing to Preston Comer. He gets the and one and Wayne feeling good in the third quarter. They lead it by 25. Javon Lewis Jr. with the pilfer and the pair and that lead 39-14. Sam Campbell though trying to help this team chip away. If you're a Saints fan, they Hook up with Preston Ross, he does here. Ross has had a big week. He gets the bucket, but simply too much. Wayne Carrington Terry with a bucket coming up as Wayne wins 61 to 43. Final stop in the SAC. We got Carroll, we got Bishop Lewis. The Knights feeling good after last Friday's one point win over Concordia. Draylon Trudale. True dad. Jalen, Dalen Trudale with the pilfer and the major punch. There'll be more jams from Carroll coming up, but Cadell Wallace for the Knights. What a leader he's been for this team this season. Gets the steal and the score. Then it's Demarcus Barr, bar none. He had himself a good game. He had 15 points that would lead the Knights with Demarcus Barr, but Dr J Dalen Trudale with the swat and then Cannon Hauser cannonizing the defense. You gotta like that. 82-55 Carroll a win against Bishop Lures. SAC girls homestead tied with Northrop for the conference lead. Snyder just a game back of both. We picked this one up in the second quarter. CC Sims knocking down the three as Snyder led by six at the half. Fourth quarter, 20 seconds to go. Snyder up two, but Evie Bottoms comes up with it and scores it. 
That would tie the game, and oh, baby, we're going to OT tied at 57. In OT, though, man, Snyder looking good. Nate, Nate Donahue, so tough. Two of her 21. And then watch Jordan Poole drop the dime to Sims as Snyder knocks off Homestead in OT, 68 to 62. Your final at Kilmer Court. It's just us building back our confidence, just how we was. So coming back on that win streak, we're ready to go again. What kind of momentum does this give you going forward for the rest of the season? I mean, you know, realistically, the postseason really isn't all that far away. Yeah, I know. It, it gives us a, a lot of confidence to just keep working hard in practice and keep fighting and keep going forward. So that's good for us. Uh, the Bruins and Northrop looking to stay undefeated in conference play. Bruins at Bay Hay Arena for a date with Northside. First quarter action, the Bruins going inside. Brooklyn Macklemore, two of her 10, going to play college ball at Finley over in Ohio. Kind of a picture-perfect start at that point for the Bruins. McKay Harmeyer drills the three for Northside. But, man, this Northrop team is stacked. Swin Jackson, the freshman, she had 15 points and seven assists. Then it's Nevea Jackson, who just the other night went over 1,000 points for her career. You can add 16 more to her total this evening as Northrop, no problem with Northside, 89 to 30, the final at Bay Hay. Let's go to Bishop Lures, the Knights hosting Carroll. Lures 6 and 10, Carroll 10 and 6. Third quarter action, it's Taylor Fordyce, who went over 1,000 points last Friday. She had 13 points in this one. And this was back and forth. The Knights, Annika Davis drills it. She had 13 points, and the game is tied at 39 all. Later, we told you about Lily George last week, the youngster inside for two. And the Knights hanging around here. Reese Roadhamel with a bucket, but it's Carroll edging lures at lures, 59 to 52. At Wayne Manor, the Generals have won five of their last six. Wayne trying to stay hot against Dwenger. And, well, this would help. That is Vanessa Cook for the Bishop Dwenger Saints scoring. Wayne, however, up 27 to 23 in the third. Giselle Ecke, Giselle with the footwork of a gazelle. She gets the bucket down low, and it's just a two-point advantage for the Wayne Generals. Amelia Diaz. Coming up here with fine Khalees Collins. Collins finds the bottom of the basket, and Wayne wins against Dwenger, 66-43 Generals. More from the SAC, Southside, a much improved Concordia team facing those archers. Olivia Bollinger gets the bucket there in the fourth, and Concordia up big. The archers, Juanita Goodwell. Going the other way here, Justice Billingsley, she had herself a game. 22 points for Billingsley, but Concordia up by 30. You're going to see Annika Nelson is going to play college ball at Huntington University, find Kaylin Bollinger here in the corner for three, and Concordia goes into Southside and comes away with a 30-point win, 71 to 41. Let's go back to some boys' action. Wawasee on the road, the Warriors at Mishawaka as the Cavemen tied for first in the NLC standings. This is Wawasee's Peyton Felger. The little fadeaway J right there in the second quarter. You're going to see more from Wawasee. This is Maddox Everingham for three. But it simply was not to be for Wawasee as Mishawaka takes care of the Warriors 69-43, to the final in this one. Stay tuned. Your gem of the night is coming up next. We are the Eastside Blazers. Stay tuned for more Highlight Zone. Fairfield Falcons, welcome back to the Highlight Zone. Let's go! Last Friday night, it was Bodie Dickerson with a bodacious dunk. Northside topping Wayne in last week's Game of the Week with the Legends senior earning the Highlight Zone's top honor with that slam. So who's going to bring it home this week? It is your Gem of the Night brought to you by Peter Franklin Jewelers. we got to give one to the ladies and the fellas. We'll start with the fellas here. Cameron Hauser with the punch. That off the block by Draylon Trudale. And that's pretty impressive, but so is this. Watch Jordan Poole for Snyder. Dropping the dime here to CC Sims as Snyder girls win in overtime against Homestead. They are your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gems of the Night. College Hoops, how about a rare Friday night game in the Big Ten? Third-ranked Purdue at home against Nebraska. First half, 
You may be familiar with this guy, Fletcher Lawyer. The kid could not miss. He drills a three, had a team high 27 as Purdue takes care of Nebraska at Mackey, 73 to 55. Final stop of the night, Wheeling, West Virginia. Comets trying to snap a four-game losing streak. They do that. This is Anthony Petrozelli's first goal of the night. He had two as the K's get a victory, two to one. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Highlight Zone. We'll see you next Friday night.